Welcome back to Project Fast Fish here on Mike's Motorworks, and we got part two on our series on doors, specifically in regards to installing fresh door skins. You don't want to miss it. It all happens right now here on Mike's Motorworks on Project Fast Fish. <laughs> Let's look at what's happened thus far. In our first episode, we looked at door hinge repairs, and then I promised about a door patch, right? Inner door skin patch. I'm not gonna show that because it wasn't as good as I thought it would turn out, so we're just not gonna put that on video, but note that the uh, driver's side door does have a patch done, and it turned out meh, okay? But when you uh, get to see this car in person, you'll probably get a chance to see that and look at it yourself. However, we have these brand new door skins from AMD. And these things are absolutely beautiful. All right, this is pretty much how it comes from the factory. Of course, uh, they came factory direct, delivered on multiple pallets. And this came everything um, on this load, everything came in on one pallet. And I got a lot of stuff on that pallet. And uh, these door skins came in their own box. And uh, yeah, pretty much as you see it here. Now I've already done some prep on this, so I'm gonna show you the prep that I have done just on the door skin in preparation for today. Now if you notice, there's a clear distinct difference in black color between the EDP and the urethane primer, right? I went ahead and did this in epoxy primer, which is a urethane base. And then, uh, of course, before I did that, I scuffed it up with a scuff pad, and the entire inner door structure was coated and treated with that primer. Then, I topped the whole thing off with lizard skin. Now, unfortunately, these stains came about from storing the doors straight on top of the car, this side up, and unfortunately, my roof, you know, we've talked about this place before, it's not the best place, but it works, right? Roof was sitting right there on top of the car and some condensation got in and as you can see, drips happen and what have you. Now it doesn't violate the integrity, but it does, you know, stain it just a little bit, but that's fine. We're gonna put the door over that, no big deal, right? But everything was treated in lizard skin and I'm gonna leave a link for the lizard skin um, uh, product here on the video itself. And everything that I showcase as far as tools, if I can leave a link, it'll happen. Additionally, I went ahead and used some weld through primer just up top here. That's fine for right now. I'll eventually go back over that with the epoxy coating. No big deal. And uh, I'll be doing some welding on these sections a little bit later on. And so that's why that is done there. Now I did not do any on the inside here because we'll just do some spot welding later on in the process. Let's take a look at the door, uh, inner door frames themselves. At the end of the last video, I noted that I was gonna take these to the blaster, and I ended up taking these to All Florida Sandblasting here in Lake City, Florida. Um, they were pretty reasonable, all right? And what they went ahead and did is they went ahead and coated everything in this marine epoxy coating, which is supposed to be probably some of the most durable stuff that's out there, um, which is kind of cool. So it worked out really, really well. I will note that you pretty much have to wire wheel this stuff off or use a pretty aggressive um, sanding pad or abrasive to get these back off there for your welding points. But overall, it turned out really, really awesome. As you can see, the structure of this door was in really good shape. And overall, there's not much to worry about. I went ahead and did some patching down here earlier and what have you and, um, and such. Just some spots that needed to be just a quick uh, tack weld and, and was done with. The other side here, let's take a look at that. This side received a fresh coat of epoxy primer in black. As you saw, the other side was white, so I wanted to make sure everything was in black. And uh, got through most of the parts here. The rest of it you probably won't see with that door skin on there. And uh, it turned out really, really awesome, and I'm satisfied with that. So now we are ready to actually fit the door skin onto the frame itself, or the inner door structure, and uh, go ahead with the installation. So let's get things started. Looking at how everything fits, everything is really, really awesome on this side. 
on this side and on this side here. And we got a good enough uh, gap here where everything shows that it's nice and snug so that as we start folding that metal over, it'll turn out really, really nice, okay, both sides. And I also went ahead and put some blue marks. Now, I don't have the um, welding device that they used at the factory. Effectively, at the factory, what they did is they used two electrodes, right? And they would come in on the metal, and with a point here, maybe a point down over here, they would put the pieces uh, together, okay, they would fold it, and then boom, you would get that um, current heated up and it would weld or spot weld those together. Not a pinch welder like I have, but a regular old uh, two point of contact welder. And they used many more points of contact. They used a point of contact here, they used one down here, they used two down here, and they used some up here, right? We're MIG welding, because I don't have that device. That's a little bit pricey and I'm not gonna afford that out, especially with buying a new house recently, right? So with that in mind, um, I went ahead and uh, marked where I'm going to go ahead and punch here, here, and here. Just three points should be sufficient on one side, three points on the other. Now down here, you have the option. Do you want to weld it or not? I will note that when I welded the other side, I did get some distortion in the welding spot. So I did two points and I got some distortion there. You have the option of just folding it in on itself and it should stay, no big deal. Now I do have some distortion here from when I was punching out the um, skin with the uh, air hammer, okay? And you can kind of see here where one, it's not quite, if I'm following the plane, right? Things aren't lining up. Two, it needs to be pulled down a little bit and we are just not lining up here as needed. So off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and fix that as well. One last note on the edges, I am gonna take some snips and just snip the edge itself so it's easier to fold in these strategic areas. And that should, again, help me with the folding process so I don't get any sharp points or edges and I can just grind as necessary. So there we go. Off camera, let me take care of this quick fix and let me get it prepped and then we'll get it going from there. Reviewing our prep here, uh, we just kind of left these here. I could weld through the primer to those if I wanted to. In fact, I probably will do that because once I get that folded in there, it'll be exposed and start rusting out. So I'm gonna weld through primer on that and on these, okay? Um, so every spot does match up and it's ready for primer. Up here, I went ahead and because I had done this so long ago, um, Weld through primer when it sits for too long is actually not very weldable. And when you put the, uh, when you attempt to create an arc, it doesn't really connect with the metal beneath of it. So it's better to grind if, if your weld through primer has been sitting more than say three days or so. Um, but everything is prepped and ready over here. Looking at this side, we see that as well. Again, I'm gonna tack each of this raw metal up with weld through primer. Now, something I had to do on mine that you may not necessarily have to do on yours. I had to address that uh, situation where the lip or the ridge was pulled out further than um, it would fit on the skin, right? And that was due to the distortion uh, from the air hammering, okay? And I think there were some other things going on there as well. Well, when I put it for the final test fit, it still wasn't working and I didn't wanna move it any further down because then it would start pushing down and be at the incorrect angle. So what I had to do is I had to kind of work the uh, frame into the skin itself using the sheet metal of the skin and the rigidity of the skin to kind of set it into place and slide it down where it needed to. So I used a bunch of the welding clamps, the open welding clamps to kind of bring it down and then use the seam clamps there to kind of fold the skin in just a little bit and work that metal down. And I should be good to go when I start working this here. This is the skin zipper. It is made by Steck. And uh, the skin zipper is said that, uh, and sold on the idea that you can skin a door in less than 10 minutes. Basically, you put it on an air hammer and you basically work your way around the door in a two-step process. Step number one, working the metal out to a 45 degree angle, all right? And then step number two, working the skin all the way down. And you can even see that modeled here on the skin zipper itself. Now, this is just a piece of urethane. Um, it feels like kind of like a rubber, but it's a urethane uh, piece, right? And you can see here where it you know, starts off at a 90 degrees, then you work it to a 45, and then go back over it to fold it in on itself. 
Now I will note, 60 pound max air. I will say, mm -mm, not gonna work, all right, for a majority of larger applications. Let me show you. So we have a corner here, and the idea here is that you wanna fold all four corners down to a 45 first. So basically, I'm gonna work the bottom, the side, over to the other side, and then down. So again, that's gonna be this side, the top side up here, corner, and around. And I wanna fold this only to a 45 degree. Now, I don't wanna go all the way down. I'm not gonna go the whole length. I only wanna fold to about here-ish here, and then here-ish on this. So let's try the skin zipper, see what the results are. All right, so here we go. As you can see, we kind of fit in there really nicely. All right, I'm gonna get a good grip on the door itself so it doesn't move. We give it a nice little firm push, and we're gonna pull the trigger here. All right, nice 45 so far. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, now let's try it on this side where the metal's a little thicker. All right, a little thicker up here. Let me get a clamp real fast while I'm thinking about it. I probably need to clamp up in this area real fast here. Let me get just this guy to work it, to hold it down flat, just for a second. Here we go, now I'm working that top side. Not bad. Not bad at all. That is definitely a good start. So let's work the other side. All right, now I have the clamp here, but I'm gonna leave the clamp, okay? And I'm gonna work only this section right here. I'll come back to this later. So hold the door, make sure that's flat. That's good. That's as far as it's gonna take me. So I'll just work down just a little bit. All right, we're good. Let's work the other sides. Again, I'm only gonna work from here to down there. Keeping it straight. Nice 45. And the same on this side. I'm gonna work at a different angle here, so I hope this works for me. Sometimes when you work on different angles, it doesn't work really well, which is probably one of the reasons why the hammering was so awkward in the last video. Not bad at all. And of course, up here. So again, I'm only gonna work this section here, okay, and I'll get to this later. Again, you can now see that that metal is now folded at a 45. All right, it's not too aggressive on the bottom, which is fine, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work the rest of this door section here, okay, at a 45, work the other sides and the back bottom side, and then go back through and work it to its next level. And I'll show you that on film or on video as well. Now, if you're wondering, Mike, dude, it has been a while since you have posted to your YouTube channel. What's going on? Well, a couple of quick notes. As some of you guys that are out there know, projects don't happen in the course of a brief time period or even a couple of weeks if that's not your primary business. Now, there are those who are out there who, whose primary business is repairing and restoring cars. And of course, they know exactly what they're getting. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they need. They can kind of get things done. And then when they're waiting on something, they can get to another car and what have you. And that's great, but that's not what's going on here, right? I'm taking this on as a side project, as part of my hobby, and I'm sharing it with the rest of the world. So things kind of uh, are going slower with this than they would maybe say on other YouTube channels. No big deal. 
Now, things have been especially slow because some things have happened in my personal life, all right? I have moved away from the place where I was staying at before and uh, bought myself my own crib, which is kind of cool. And um, I don't have a garage there where I can keep the project. So I'm renting the space that I once used and of course am um, doing the, uh, fixing up the other house as well. So that's a lot to take on. I also took on a second job. So I got a primary job, I got a secondary job. And why did I get a second job? Well, I was hoping the YouTube thing would pan out more, but I love doing this so much that um, I'm gonna continue to do it, even though it's not, uh, well, earning as much on the returns as I thought it would, which is fine, it's okay. Um, but I'll be honest with you, if you're an upstart, don't rely on it to pay your bills. Even after, you know, a few years into it, it's going to be slow for growth. Okay, no big deal. I'm not complaining. I'm very grateful for the platform. And I'm very grateful to be able to share my learning experience with you guys, right? But overall, you know, things kind of get in the way. So between a new house, a second job, primary job, balancing both back and forth, it's difficult to find the time to get out here and get this done, okay? But we are still moving forward, we are still going forward. And I hope to bring you some more great content as we move forward, because quite frankly, many of you wanna see this when it's all done, right? You wanna see what this looks like when all is said and done, and I intend to at least keep on going with the filming until such time as we got this thing as a roller. If not, maybe even longer than that, depending on how things go. So let's get back to it. Overall, not too bad with the skin zipper for that first fold. Now, this does say 60 pounds max air. I did find that to be a little useless the first time I used it. It just wasn't folding this thicker metal, so I umped it up to 100. Now, you will note here that the if I get this on the angle right here, it does chew it up pretty good because again, this is just a urethane, all righty? And this guy just kind of popped off there, but that's fine, that's just par for the course, I'm sure. So it does eat it, so there is a limited life on these. Now, when it comes time for the second fold, there are two settings you could use effectively. You got one side for thin, one side for thick. Now, we are dealing with a thicker gauge, all righty? So I'm gonna go ahead and run with the thick, and that does work pretty awesomely as well. Now, there is an alternate if you don't wanna use this, and I will use this alternate for other portions as well. Let me show you that. Here, we have a door skin repair kit from Maddox. It is the MB41 that's available through Harbor Freight. Sometimes Harbor Freight's not so good on stuff. Sometimes they're pretty awesome on stuff as far as value is concerned, right? This is one of their better buys, in my opinion. Inside, we have our door skinning hammer. Notice the curved edge allows you kind of to work up against the surfaces a little bit closer as you're working and folding those edges down. You have two big dollies here. You got your heel toe dolly right here, all right? You can work this. I was told this is the better one to use because it fits nicely in the hand. Um, and while I do agree with that to a certain point, I found it a little bit big for my hands. And then of course you have this dolly here, which is my go-to dolly uh, as far as you know shaping and forming at least for straight edges. Now there are better ways to use it with like different curvatures and such. I'm not that good at that and that's something I need to work on. Now additional thing that people did like is it come with the slapper here. And again, this gives you another dolly option or allows you to slap the metal as needed. I find that uh, after watching a couple of videos, the most uh, feedback I've gotten on the slapper is while it's good for certain things and shaping and such, for flattening out, maybe not so much, but people go to it. Um, maybe if people have their opinion on it, they could write about it. Now we can go ahead and take our hammer and dolly, our fender repair kit, and go ahead and work the edges around here where it's a little bit higher than the rest. So you just take it and kind of work it down. Nice and easy. You don't want to have your hammer at an angle because it will mar the metal. So just nice and easy. And even if you wanted to, you could actually do that throughout the rest of the metal here as well, if you so choose. I'm um, not too worried about that. Of course, we'll go ahead and work in the spaces there. So let me show you that on camera here. Let me finish this spot up right there. Now 
I do have a little point right here that can easily just be ground off and ground down to a nice round point. So I'm not too worried about that. All right, feels like we're pretty good there and there. This side over here, I'm gonna work this. And then these guys actually get folded completely over, okay, all the way over to make sure that everything is kind of folded in on itself. And you'll see me use a couple of clamps here in just a few minutes. But the idea is to fold this over completely on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that off camera and then uh, we'll get to the rest of it. Real quick, let's summarize everything. We went ahead and uh, got everything aligned got everything ready to weld in. I'm gonna do that off camera after this episode has concluded and the filming for this is done. Went ahead and folded everything in. Looks really, really nice up in there. Now, when you're working this, if you're watching this for a how-to, don't forget these spaces up here. What you wanna do is when you set the door in, of course. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can either remove this bottom bar right here and then add this later and weld it in. Should you choose to do that route, that's nothing wrong with that. Now, I decided to keep it in. That way it goes straight on where it came from from the factory. So I got a couple of plug welds I gotta do. And I just simply matched up where the metal touched the metal at, and that way I can create uh, the plug welds. I'll go through when it's welding time and uh, clamp those in accordingly or use sheet metal screws, okay? Over here, everything turned out really, really good. Nice and smooth, okay? And then of course, just the spots left over for me to go ahead and run those plug welds. Down here, everything turned out awesome. I am really happy with the way that this turned out down here and really filled everything in and brought everything back to shape and to form. Mm -hmm.